Hello, Final Fantasy Randomizer, and welcome to this month's FFR slash FFMQR Archipelago Showcase. My name is Hebbings, and I'm joined on the mic by the ever-lovely Darkmoon. Darkmoon, how are you doing? So nice to be lovely. I'm doing pretty well. Uh, it's going to be a fun one tonight. We're uh, kind of, sort of, beta testing out the flags that we're going to be doing for the crossover AP tournament at the end of the year. So this is going to be fun to watch and see what the runners do and how all of this goes. Yep. Uh, so quick heads up on the flags for tonight. Uh, these are tentative settings that we are holding for a future uh, event upcoming. So we're going to see how this goes tonight. A little bit of live showcase never hurt anybody. Uh, some of the outliers you might see on our trackers right now for the Final Fantasy Mystic Quest runners, they are starting with the River Coin. There will be Overworld Shuffle, and they will have the spell books of their companions shuffled tonight with their progression for the partners. Ben's level plus 10. Uh, Moon, can you go ahead and give some high? Highlights for the FFRC before we kick off? Certainly. We're getting Free Canoe, which is going to open up a lot of transportation around the world. We have Shuffled Towns, which sometimes is annoying, sometimes can be really nice, especially if, like, a superstore from Lithane, which I believe is on, shows up in a town that you can get to. So that's that's really nice to see. Uh, 28 Shards for everything being loose. Going to be checking a lot of boxes. And, oh yeah, they have a Force Party of only two players, which looks like a Black Belt and a Red Mage. The Red Mage, I saw earlier, has free Nuke Magic attached to them, plus 20 Vitality, but minus 10 Strength, and that minus 10 Strength really isn't going to matter at all. Also, the Black Belt has plus 5, plus five Luck, resists to Ice, Earth, and Poison, but loses 150 Gold, which, again isn't really going to matter, because when you have a black belt, they're not buying a lot of stuff. The question will be, with nuke magic and a black belt, if they even bother, like, keeping other characters alive. Nuns do gain EX, uh, EXP, but all you gotta do is recruit someone and then kill them, and then that's no longer a problem anymore. So, we'll be seeing some fun stuff going on today, I am sure. Indeed. And speaking of fun things, we got an overworld shuffle over here on the MQR side. Uh, looks like we're starting off with a Venus key and Ruben as our partner. Again, uh, partner progression is Ben's level plus 10 tonight. So the way to level up your partners is to level up yourself. Uh, and I do not know what spells anybody has tonight. So we're, we are in for a treat. <laughs> looks like Ruben started off with Arrow. Very nice pick for him. Uh, while he doesn't have the greatest magic stat in the world, Arrow is the strongest black magic spell you can get on par with... Uh, really late game damage so aoe this is going to be pretty nice for our runners starting off how's it looking on ffr side moon so interesting thing that i didn't initially see when i was looking over the flags and that's on me there's so many flags for ffr you can easily miss stuff we have all weapons cast magic turned on and there were four hammers effectively for sale over in canaria for a whopping eight gold a piece so they bought two of those they're going to be casting a whole lot of lightning too i don't even know if they actually checked real magic because you got Nuke, you got Lightning 2 Hammers. I saw at least one of them with an Opal Bracelet on there for really good armor. Yeah, it, it, it oh, they, they do have Fire 3. So it feels like they're pretty well stacked at this point and not going to struggle too much. Although Garland is putting up just a little bit of a fight for Ike here. Although I don't think he bought the Lightning 2 Hammer to help out. Enough Nuke and it doesn't matter though. Indeed, it's, it's basically free real estate. Yeah, if you have a problem, just cast Nuke on it. It's fine, it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Looks, looks like there was a quake passed out by the partners here. I would say send that back. I don't want it, please. Uh, refri I, this is a gift I don't want to give it to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel that that's kind of how it is for FFR, unless you're trying to battle Lich or something. We don't really want that quake anymore. We're good. We're good. Indeed. So, yeah, it looks like the river coin uh, not necessarily needed for tonight's seed so far. Progression's looking pretty pretty nice on both uh sides of the house so far no one in bk quite yet although um still early on and it looks like i might be speaking a little bit too soon running out of checks here flip heel uh dipping in the fireberg meanwhile possum going up volcano so we'll see just you know how useful this early river coin is going to be for our runners uh, again effectively we're open up half of the map for our runners on the mqr side the nice thing about an early canoe is that essentially everything around the Circle Sea is open to us right from the start in FFR. Every location you can think of around there is there for us to explore. It's going to be really easy for us to get around and do stuff. It's a good side, bad side, though, because we do have Fire 3, and we have Nuke, and that's lovely. Got some Lightning Hammers, that's going to be okay. 
these are the kinds of things where it's nice to have those because it's going to make like going through ice cave easier but still ice cave being ice cave we don't always want to do that yeah, and speaking of nice things to have, it looks like Matoya's Cave has the Dragon Claw for our runners. Uh, that's going to be a very nice to have, not only opening up those Dragon Claw passageways or Claw passageways, uh, but is going to be one of our go mode items required for our runners tonight. We do not have Doom Castle shortcut turned on uh, for the Mystic Quest side of the house, so they still will need Mega Grenades, Dragon Claw. Uh, they'll need the Free Max ship. Um, you know, locate, and they'll need the Mobius Crest to get to the, the pier. So the, the traditional go mode is still needed. The overworld's just shuffled tonight for mm. the MQR team. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've seen the core actually in action. I made this sprite as a joke. <laughs> and now I'm seeing it I'm like, oh my god, that wiggle is amazing, okay? <laughs> no, you did a great job. I, I love randomly getting the core. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, sprites to meme with that outside the, the the testing. I think we have a testing sprite that's literally just like numbers on a grid. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a really fun one to get. Yeah, uh, that's so good. Whew. Anyway, so we got um, Ike here making his way all the way over to uh, Crescent, doing a little bit of a burn there, and he finds Lafane, which... Assuming Superstore is on, which usually... It, oh, it's not... Oh! Oh, that's rough. I was hoping Superstore was on. I didn't actually remember to look for it, and it's not. So, what Superstore does is it puts uh, magic shops, all the magic shops, in Lafayne. They're still in the other towns, too, but it puts duplicates of them in Lafayne, and it makes it easy for someone to go and buy all the magic if they wanted. It is a little powerful and broken, though, when you get it early in a town shuffle seed, and... The designers clearly understood that and didn't let us have it, so that's sad. Yeah, and also speaking of sad, that black belt uh, taking a dirt nap a little early. Those levels are going to be key on that black belt, so yep. looks like yep. Ike here is rushing to get him back up as soon as possible. Well, it's, it's a weird balance you have to do because nuns gain EXP, so you don't want to dump a bunch of levels onto a character that you may not end up using, and when you're talking about a black belt seed, the only character that really matters is the Black Belt. At the same time, you need a little bit of level so you can get through things like Ice Cave. So, give and take there. Indeed. Yeah. Meanwhile, Scar is taking the other path. He decided to go westernly around the Circle Sea as opposed to easterly. And he's checking out past Northwest Castle. Not going to Marsh Cave yet. Wondering if he's going to hit El uh, Elfland first before doing anything. Ike here definitely doing an early level grind right now to try and get some encounters out of the way that he can manage with a nuke. Can't say I blame him. Yeah, meanwhile, Flip Hill and Possum Morpheus kind of flip flop in here as they get through their navigations. Flip Hill's dipped into Lava Dome. Uh, meanwhile, Possum Morpheus now leaving the Forester region, uh, going up to the Rivercoin door, uh, River door, but now doubling back. Uh, maybe forgot something, uh, but I did see on one of the AP trackers that Possum Morpheus has his Mega Grenades. Uh, we'll see if those come in handy. They're definitely good for damage off the start. I don't know if they're going to come across any bomb hazards yet, uh, but they are consistent AoE damage. But with Ruben having Arrow, that's really not going to be too big of an issue. This is definitely a red beige seed here that we have. Uh, found Provoca over at Elfland. Uh, which both Ikear and Scar are currently at right now. Missed what they got. I think it was an AP item. We'll have to check the tracker to see exactly what that is. And that is a shard. Excellent. Thank you, AP tracker. Uh, but the thing that was important that we found here more than anything was the fact that Nuke and Warp and Exit are all level 2, and they're all learnable by that Red Mage. Now, that's a lot that's been put on that Red Mage for that level, but at the same time, I mean, why stop with one Red Mage if you can recruit another, recruit another? That's really good magic, and you've got all the transport and damage you really ever want for them. Yeah, Porque no los dos. Now, uh, <laughs> Moon, Moon, give me the rundown on our partners tonight. How, how are we, are we um, ascending them with the Rat's Tail and Bahamut, or are we sticking with base forms and they can only recruit partners? Well, that is the question that we need to determine based upon whether or not the MDEF for the characters is actually standard or weirdly weirdly different. Uh, I'm going to double check that right now. If it was a standard MDEF flag set, which I'm assuming it is, then we don't want to promote because the... And yeah, MDEF growth is vanilla. So we don't want to promote because the Black Belt is kind of bugged in vanilla Final Fantasy. 
So the way it works is that every class is supposed to be a promotion, an improvement in your stats. However, for whatever reason, in the way that vanilla FF uh, is promoted, uh, is designed, and we didn't change that in the randomizer, because we try and keep things that aren't errors that seem like the our actual errors, you know, and things that aren't have obvious errors we don't change. The MDEF in a black belt is much better than the MDEF on a master. So it's four points per level for a black belt, one point per level for a master. So if you promote them, they're getting less MDEF per level than they would if they stayed unpromoted. Because of that, and because we have such good magic in the early levels where you don't need promotion to get them, I would be surprised if we ever promote. Fair enough. Now, if they do decide to promote, will they mm -hmm. will they carry over that MDEF, uh, MDEF stat that they've accrued as a black belt over to the master, or does it get overwritten? No, it carries over. So you, your stats stay the same uh, pre-promo, and then new promo level stats are earned past that point. Uh, so, for instance, if you go all the way to, like, 42 with a black belt, you effectively have a ribbon on you. If you then promote it at that point, you keep that really high M depth, and any future levels you gain are at the lower M depth, which is really nice for the black belt. Now, the one trick to that is, is if you were to, say, find a recruitable character, they're recruited as if they were whatever... From base level one, whatever class you're recruiting them at. So if you recruited a promoted character at like 42, they would have the 42 M def of a monk, uh, like a master from level one to 42. So depending upon what you're doing and how you're doing things, like strategy around promotion and around recruiting is important. But again, I I really don't expect anyone to promote because black belt. Fair enough. Uh, mm -hmm. Double tech, double checking the tracker over here. I remember calling out earlier that I thought I saw someone get mega grenades, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It might have been a hint that I saw come across mm -hmm. the archipelago text mm -hmm. box. So I'm trying to check the tracker here now. Right now, I just see Jumbo Bomb over on Ikear's side, uh, sent to Flip Heal. That looks like, um, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And that's just that the progressive bombs are on all the progressive items as far as i know so that would mean that they, they have one of them but not the the final one yeah so progressive items have been turned off from mqr so um the way progressive items would work for us would be you'd start oh, okay. if you would get a bomb it would say progressive bomb in the ap mm -hmm. text box and you mm -hmm. would get your base bombs and then jumbos and then megas um mm -hmm. So, so that's how that would work for them, but that's not how we're doing it tonight. So someone must have hinted for Mega Grenades, which is honestly a great play. It, mega Grenades are not only a great source of damage, but they are required for Go Mode. Uh, so as many hints as you can cash out for those Go Mode items, the better, in my opinion. They open up a lot too, don't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. bomb, explosives are used in almost every single main dungeon, uh, except for Lava Dome. Lava Dome... Um, for some reason it just doesn't have any item requirements you'll need claw to get to a couple chests and mega grenades to get to a couple other chests but like to get to the end boss you need no weapon requirements it's just a straight run that sounds actually a lot like vanilla final fantasy where like <laughs> the requirements to get into volcano are the min like the minimalist of all of them in the vanilla game all you have to do is defeat a uh, lich and then you're given a free canoe from the sages and you get to just canoe to volcano in Final Fantasy Randomizer, so long as you have a canoe, you can get in there and you need the canoe for other stuff, so it does, it's not even, like, volcano progression, it's just progression. Yeah, no, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they took a little inspiration from the original FF yeah. far when they were making Mystic Quest. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of similarities in these early games. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and speaking of similarities, our runners are pretty flip-floppy with each other from what I've seen. I think I spotted a Ruben up in Tristram's location there over on Flip Hill's side of the house. Meanwhile, Possumorphia is still working his way down. Uh, try to get those Mega Grenades. If I, if I was reading that hint earlier, which I think it was a hint, uh, the Mega Grenades are in Lava Dome. Uh, so we'll see who hinted for those earlier. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Ikear's in Ice Cave. Ikear's in Ice Cave. Scar just finished Earth Cave. Uh, we do see that they... What was it? Does Possum have the top claw now yeah uh yes so both oh. of our ff runners have their top claw now they got the possum got the mid-tier claw and uh had to flop back to it really quick 
Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, Rod is there for Scar, so uh, Earth Cave is open to them right now. Ikir has found loot, which doesn't open any progression right now, but is required to get us into the end game. so not a bad thing to have. Uh, the diversity of where they're going right now makes perfect sense, too, because without a hint to tell them where to go, all they're wanting to do right now is go to chest-dense areas. Oh, that's the wrong eye. That's that's foul. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> that, looked a little, that looked a little mean. Yeah, and again... Yeah, the, 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 the eye is a great experience source, and you want to see it. The phantom, which is the upper level eye, is the wrong eye, and you absolutely do not want to see him. So we're trying to make just, him up through this dungeon. It's just super powerful. It, yeah. And not good XP. Oh, no. In the vanilla game, it's worth exactly one experience point. Oh, jeez. No. That's <laughs> it's, it's, dope. It's, the, it's the guard first guardian of the end dungeon, and the designers just didn't think you needed ex experience points at that point for some reason. So... Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that that's not awful. good. Ambushed by wizards, that's... that's And they hit hard, too. That's not fun to see. Yeah, he's I can unfortunately get... He's getting the business. Oh, he got away. Wow. Now, the thing is, for Final Fantasy, if he had died and had to reset out of the dungeon, everything he found is still up in the bag of holding in the cloud. So it wouldn't have been the end of the world for him to, like, miss out on a few chests. But you really don't want to miss out on chests if you can help it. And... He had three to go. He doesn't have to do anything more. He's out of Ice Cave. We're done. Yay! Yay! And moving on. And with the Earth Cave available to Scar, Scar is now checking out Earth Cave. Finds a blue D on an elemental tile. Gonna go check these two tiles in the Hall of Dragons, or Hall of Giants, and we're gonna see if there's anything cool. There is nothing cool. We're good. Indeed. And I am requesting from our lovely tracker team a text dump of who got what spells for the Mystic Quest side so we can kind of see what everybody's leaning towards for their picks. I see Flip Hills picked up Phoebe. I don't know if he's regretting that decision or not. Impossum's sticking with our boy Reuben. Um, now, while they their spell books have been shuffled, there's our Mega Grenades, our um, resistances and all the other telling traits of our partners have not been changed at all. Uh, so Phoebe still has the best resistance lineup in the game. Reuben has almost none, minus some fire damage. Uh, Tristam can resist instant death and some fire damage. And Kaylee actually has a good uh, resistance set with petrification and, uh, I believe, paralysis. But unfortunately, uh, she only rolled life <laughs> tonight. That's the only spell she has in her, uh, like her arsenal. Uh, so not exactly a great partner pick for our runners tonight. Ikear is absolutely getting the business trying to take the river system to get back out, and the river is just not having it. Yeah, he rolled into the wrong neighborhood on that black belt, unfortunately. Yeah. Hopefully he gets out of it safely. Well, the unfortunate thing is the black belt's not really all that great at running, and he only has the black belt right now to do everything, and I don't think he decided to buy... Thor hammers, so he doesn't even have AoE damage that he can do right now. It's If that's the case, it's very limited, and he's having to try and scum his way around the overworld to get back to Crescent Lake to just get his red mage alive. Oh, that, we didn't. Oh, he does have a Fire 2 sword, but that's not great on the river, so... Yeah, uh, now, chat pointing out something interesting on the Mystic Quest side. Surprised no one's hinted for the exit book yet and uh, honestly it's a great play to make it's just there could be some other priorities in the mm -hmm. meantime um but honestly i wouldn't be surprised if i did see that that hit pop up at some point exit is like our main mobility spell in mystic quest randomizer it'll get you in and out of dungeons you can use it on the overworld to warp back to the main starting continent it's uh it just you could banish enemies to the shadow realm if you feel like it uh it it, it's a great spell to have overall. Honestly, it's the best spell, in my opinion, in the game. You're really struggling over here on this side. Just trying to get away from something. He's there running into go. some like the nastiest encounters that I think he mm -hmm. can run into, but he's made it. He made it to town safely. Well, I don't think that there's a good scummable fight off the uh, hard reset that they can use to try and navigate their way around the overworld. So that definitely wasn't helping. He is, however, already at nine shards. So, I mean, that's a third of the way, or eight shards. That's third-ish of the way to where he needs to be right now. So that is that is lovely to see. Indeed. And also, speaking of lovely to see, while I was um, looking away, 
our Mystic Quest runners um, found the Thunder Rock, or at least Flip Heel has. I'm looking up now to see where that Thunder Rock was found. Don't know where it showed up yet, uh, not marked, but um, it's in Flip Heel's inventory, uh, which is another go mode item, and it can be quite elusive. So if that's found on FFR's side, um, Ikear's struggle was not for nothing. He did manage to send some goodies over to Flip Heel in the form of go mode item. Now he's in here over at Volcano, going to be exploring this, going to see what's available to us. He's keeping the red mage up front, which I know that he has the opal circle on, which is, you know the best armor that he's going to be able to wear, but it is it is also why he's taking all the hits and suffering all the damage. Meanwhile, Scar is still navigating his way through Earth Cave, and above him, a core has lit a crystal. Indeed, and uh, while that crystal, that beacon's being lit, I do have the spell list breakdown. So Kaylee tonight shuffled literally no spells. That's why she only has life in her inventory. Rip Kaylee, you're not going to see her tonight. Uh, Tristam rolled Heal, Fire, Cure, and Blizzard. Uh, not exactly a riveting lineup. Phoebe, meanwhile, rolled Heal, Arrow, Cure, and White. Uh, level 16 is all that's needed to get uh, Phoebe that, uh, basically her tactical nuke. Uh, so that's a great pick. And Ruben also rolled Arrow, Cure, Thunder, and White. Uh, so Phoebe and Ruben are our two heavy hitters for tonight. Ruben doesn't get his white until level 22. So that's probably why Heal is sticking with Phoebe right now, because she's already gotten white uh, from level 16. So basically, uh, he can one-shot almost all these mob encounters as he's rolling through. And Possum now doing the same thing on his side now that his Ruben is level 22. Uh, basically on easy street now in terms of partner damage for both of our Mystic Quest runners. Mm -hmm. So, for Mystic Quest, this this is a question I have as someone who doesn't know the game very well. So you have mm -hmm. Flare and White. What is the mm -hmm. damage like between the two of them? Is, is White, like, or is Flare substantially better, or is it just like White Magic versus Black Magic version of the same spell? So, uh, White and Flare have about a 600 damage difference between the two of them. Yeah. Um, however, White in this game, even though it's supposed to be, it's in like the quote unquote blizzard or water spell slot on the wizard lineup where blizzard is, um, it's non-elemental. So if you have an enemy that is uh, resistant to fire damage, flare in this game, uh, flare mystic quest is coded to be fire damage. If it's resistant to fire damage, white is a great secondary spell to have because not only does it have a fast cast time, it does great damage. And it's, you get it really early on. Um, white in the vanilla game has gotten about like at the halfway point mm -hmm. uh, and it's basically for free like you walk up into a chest and you're like cool you now have like one of the best spells in the game and I think in the speed run they don't even bother getting flare they're just like yeah no white all the way <laughs> uh, yeah because in uh, Final Fantasy the vanilla vanilla version that we, we maintain the spells here for the randomizer uh, our versions are Nuke and Fade, and Fade is slightly worse than Nuke, but they're both non-elemental, so cannot be resisted by elemental uh, protection. Yep. Mm -hmm. And apparently, uh, Ikear's Volcano is uh, packed I, full of goodies. I keep seeing stuff. He lost Sky Fragments. I see a lot of red text there indicating his AP had everything. Now, I mean, in fairness, we are talking about, like... 18, 19 chests there on the top floor of Volcano, most of that in that little armory room right there. So, not a surprise, there's a lot, I mean, everything that FFR could find is basically in the AP pool for it, so... It's a good spot to hit, and I, I definitely agree with him coming over here to do this dungeon. Especially when, they, you know, it's got free canoe and you can just get here. Yeah, for sure. I, I remember my one time running FFR with you, like, uh -huh. uh, Volca Volcano was, uh, no pun intended, the hot spot for chests. It's, it's yeah. just so <laughs> dense. So, some pun uh, established, however. But yes, no, it's it's a great dungeon to go early, go to early on if you need some place that's chest dense and you're looking for stuff, especially in, like, AP. And don't you worry, we'll get you back into FFR again at some point. <laughs> at some point. We'll get there. At eventually. some point. <laughs> Meanwhile, it looks like Possum Morpheus dipping in the P Tower, taking a couple encounters he doesn't necessarily need to take right now, uh, but opting to take them probably for the XP gain, trying to pump up his partners as much as possible. That's probably going to be the end game for our runners here is to try to get that partner XP um, 
pumped up as quickly as possible because again it's ben's level plus 10. uh so right now posimorpheus is level 13 his ruben is now level 23 um and that'll just get harder to raise as they move forward so getting these early levels on these end game encounters here uh, it's going to be very nice. We don't have a lot of go mode items. We do have our go mode equipment for FFMQR. So basically, Mystic Quest, you have your Mega Grenades of Dragon Claw, but we're still missing Mobius Crest. Uh, we don't have access uh, to Max Ship so far. Uh, we have not found Spencer's Cave, and we haven't gotten access to the Windier region yet. Uh, and we are missing T-Rock on Possumorpheus side, and there's the ever-elusive Captain's Cap, which can literally be anywhere, even on, like, right in front of Captain Mac. So, uh, time will tell who's in the lead right now. I think we've seen so much divergence on all four of our runners' screens, we really don't know who's got a leg up in the race so far. Well, one question to be had is how they are doing on shards right now. I haven't seen a lot of shards or sky fragments coming out of the FF side of things for Scar, Earth Cave was kind of empty, a little bit of a dud here from everything I've seen, especially in comparison to this absolutely loaded volcano right now. Oh, look, a ribbon, because they didn't have enough already. Uh, nine shards there for Ike here so far on his side. Uh, so he's he is at a third of the way to his goal for shards. Still needs the key, has the loot. That's where he's standing. Don't know yet about Scar. We'll have to see in a little bit. But we do have Bubbles. Oh, there's Bubbles. So let's see if Bubbles has fade. Oh boy, yeah, and while we wait so to see dazzle. if Bubbles... Oh, the Razzle Dazzle. Razzle uh, Dazzle. Frost <laughs> comes out. Frost isn't going to be too bad, and a second nuke should finish her off. She's at the Lich spot. She can't have that much health. She did have stunning, though. That was... that was funny. <laughs> Yeah, a uh, quick shard update real quick for our Mystic Quest side. Possum Morpheus is at 15. Meanwhile, I do not have a count quite yet on Flip Heal, but I will go ahead and tell you, chat, that if you want to catch that, if I haven't, keep an eye on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Whenever our runners on the Mystic Quest side of the house get a shard, uh, you'll now see a little number pop up under that little box on the bottom right-hand side, and that is their shard count. Did recruit a white mage from that Lich fight, so that gives us a third-party member here. Uh, they are actually buying spells for them. They bought the the memeable lamp, but also harm four, which with white mage cast harm on all, means that that's going to be basically fade damage for uh, all the undead and close to. And then also, by the way, there's there's fade and life too as well. So white magic also really stacked, and the the red mage can learn life too. Like that red mage still doing its job of being incredibly essential. Indeed. And if you're wondering how they got over here from Canaria, there is a river on this flag set from Melman to the Canaria area. Mm. So Scar could go do Earth Cave without even having the ship or airship for that. Free mm. canoe opens a lot. It does. I, it was surprising to see how much was locked behind rivers uh, when I was playing through these, uh, playing through FFR before. Um, yep. And it looks like not a ton of progress on either side in terms of mm -mm. progression unlocks like it looks like they're doing a lot there's a lot there's a lot of checks going on here obviously um but not seeing a lot of progressive items like pop into our runners inventories um mq's missing a lot of good key mm -hmm. items we haven't seen mm -hmm. any other coins other than the starting one i don't i mean we got a key and a rod over on um uh, ffr side of the house and um uh, not bottle. What is it that lets you go underground? I mean, underwater to Oxio. Thank you, Oxio. Yes. In a loot, but other than that, I mean, Scar just got the ship. We've got a somewhat dicey fight going on here for uh, the Red Mage here on Ikear's side. They're fighting the Evil Elf, our boosted version of Astos. Uh, has a lot of nuke, is able to cast nuke and gonna get through it. But for a while there, they were getting whittled down and that black mage went down entirely. Uh, and then we get, of course, the the lovely surprise uh, fight from Ogres. He's trying to run from it. That's, um... I think you just need to, like, fire three or nuke your way through this. You, you, you need to... Yeah, you need to get out of this. He has a cure two sword that's kind of okay, but... Magic. Just magic your way out of this. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, between <laughs> the fact that we have Scar with the key and Ike here with the loot, that means technically go mode for Final Fantasy Randomizer is early enough in here that as soon as they get shards, they can just go. 
however that's gonna work out they can just go yeah well let's see if they uh get any other help from the mq side of the house it looks like uh while we were checking out ffr flip Hill got a sword from somewhere let me go ahead and check my notes here and see where he got that from he did get a steel sword which granted him access to ice pyramid one of the most i think it's actually the most dense uh location in the game in terms of chest density uh, so nice. this is going to be great pickings for Flip Heel. Not having the magic mirror like Possum has, though, is going to mean that he's going to be bumping into encounters a lot, whether he likes it or not. Because mm. the magic mirror reveals the encounters in Ice Pyramid? Indeed, yes. Frozen Cave, whatever you call it. Oh, it looks like Sword was free. So both of our runners oh. uh, should have, should have that a then? free sword. Okay. Should have a free sword. The, 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 the steel toothpick. Hey, look, that's all you need. <laughs> uh, you only need an sword to get through <laughs> Mystic Quest Randomizer. It doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, I just like finding fun names for everything. Steel Toothpick's yeah. a good one. I mean, I like yeah, no. The damage like it does is equivalent to a toothpick. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get that. Uh, calling any of the shields in uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer sleds is also fun. We're oh, going like up. Float. Floaters and Jerkbirds Tower. Mm. Are we doing just a monster encounter here, like on the overworld? I think I missed how they got into that. Oh, they're oh. Uh, doing a battleground. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. That was, that was, yeah. And we're coming back here to Provoca for, oh, we bought a, took a second black belt in Volcano. Interesting choice. Hey, you really only down. need one. Well, you only need one. But right now, like, the extra party member is not bad to have. You'll just probably end up killing one at some point. And then stealing all their EXP. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. Aegis Shield found over on Flip Hill's side of the house. That's going to be very, very nice uh, in terms of resistances. That now grants him immunity from paralysis and petrification. Not to mention a nice little stat boost in the defense side of the house. Um, it's going to be making some of these potential encounters much nicer to deal with, although all the other status ailments are on the table, and we've seen a couple Dark King fights in our last uh, tournament to, to know that uh, sleep and uh, paralysis are in, you know, all the other status ailments are nothing to shake uh, a stick at. I just saw an exit book be sent over. Yep, yeah, there was Volcano one earlier, too. Exit. Yeah. Um, gotcha. And I just want to point out that, oh, Oh, apparently there's a floater for Scar's side. I was just starting to talk about how we're going to need progression soon, but apparently Scar just got the floater and I wasn't even noticing. So, hey, they're in the air. That is awesome. That's almost the entire world open to them now. <laughs> now, now, is precision, uh, uh, decision paralysis a thing in FFR as well? It's like you get an early open world and you're kind of like, well, I can do everything now. What do I do? Or is it pretty pretty coded to kind of point you in the right direction just because of density of locations? Yeah, there's no there's no logic to Final Fantasy Randomizer. Uh, that's not the way it's coded. Uh, you get items, and then you just kind of, if you have a dungeon you can go to, you try and do it, especially if you can clear the dungeon. But the game doesn't know how to point you in any specific direction. It's just like, items can be somewhere. As long as you can access it, your item could be there. So in the case of, like, let's say the entire... Uh, dungeons are the entire world is basically open to us we can't get into sky palace right now because we don't have chime and cube but we can go into waterfall and uh sea sea shrine in the case of ike here because they've got oxyale actually they have chime and cube look at that so between the two players they have actually access to almost everything now which is crazy uh they're just completely different routes to get there but um because there's chime and cube and let's say that they had oxyale and they had floater where you want to go it's really just dependent entirely upon chest density at that point. Sky is your most chest dense dungeon, and it also has the best experience. So with all the nukes and harm fours and everything else that they do, it's there, I don't think there should be any decision paralysis on that. Your best bet is just to go to Sky. Fair. Yeah, yep. no, and that's it, kind of, I mean, how we're operating in Mystic Quest right now, too. It's just like you go to where your items are pointing you. Uh, and you kind of make do with what you got. Well, I think Flip Hill just got all three swords. I Did I see a knight sword? I might not have. And I saw a Masamune get tossed over, I think, on Scar and Possum Morpheus side. Nice. Uh, Wildham was asking if Northern Docks are on. Northern Docks are on. 
Uh, and with both of them now having the ship, that means that, again, basically the entire world is open to them. Uh, canoe gates a lot more in many respects than the uh, ship or airship does. You can't get into ordeals without a canoe. You can't get into volcano or a, you can't uh, overworld to volcano without the canoe. You can't overworld to ice without the canoe. Now, in some of these cases, you can actually like ship over with the and then land at the canoe river for that dock, or you could like uh, floater over for volcano and ice. But it like depending upon where you are in the seed and what stuff's available to you. Canoe blocks a ton. So having the canoe be free here means that, you know, there's a lot of progression that we can get early and a lot of the world that's open to us. And as soon as we got the ship or the floater, everything else was open to us. Yeah, speaking, of opening, crazy. speaking of opening the world, Flip Hill just found their first coin and this, what we've been going for a little over a half hour now. Uh, sand coin is located in Ice Pyramid, so now uh, we'll have access to the Aquaria region of the map. Now it just has to make their way through the rest of Ice Pyramid here, check and see if Golem's holding on to any goodies, and if not, he's out of there. Uh, gonna be dipping out and probably making his way towards that next region. Meanwhile, Possum Morpheus finally in the windier region himself. Uh, curious how he got there? Uh, I don't I don't remember seeing him get the Sun Coin, but he must have gotten it at some point. Must be, because he's there. Uh, shout outs to our trackers, uh, chat. Without them keeping track of what's going on, at least, for us in the broadcast booths, uh, I don't think we'd be able to make heads or tails of what's going on between four different uh, screens. Uh, D Kirby asking, what is an AP item? So this is, uh, we're multi-worlding the two games via the Archipelag Archipelago, I always say the word wrong, Archipelago Randomizer System, which is like, what, 40, 50 somewhat odd games, all linked together via Archipelago's software. And so items are shared between the games. Uh, FFMQR items will be in FFR and vice versa. And anything that's shared in the cloud uh, that was randomized by the system will be marked in FFR as AP item. That indicates that it's an archipelago item, but the system, because it's a rudimentary NES game that, that can't have a giant inventory of everything that ever exists, doesn't understand what it is, so it's marked as AP. You'll see certain things in other games like this, like if you play uh, Link to the Past uh, Randomizer via AP, then there's uh, any item that isn't naturally in its own game will be marked with a star, and it will just say something like AP item or something like that. Same diff. Yep, exactly. So like when mm -hmm. we're when we're talking about how Possum Morpheus sent a Masamune to Scar, mm -hmm. uh, you'll have seen on Possum Morpheus' screen that he got an AP item, and then in that text box underneath there Possum's was. screen, uh, you'll see what the item was that was sent over, and hopefully little, that helps Chad. Little AP icon because FFMQR has the room in its data for um, actually showing a special icon for that, whereas FFR is packed full and we don't have room for icons. Yeah, there's only so much you can fit on that Nest cart. Oh, I got <laughs> so little, it's tiny. <laughs> Microscopic. You can't even have like more than like two colors on a on a sprite. It, Our, I mean, like more than three. Oh yeah, no. Our devs upgraded the cart originally from the uh, MMC one, the very tiniest little cart, to an MMC three at one point a couple or three years ago, and now they're discussing maybe having to upgrade again to an MMC five or something, uh, just to uh, upgrade how the game works. But that causes some issues with certain emulators. Like at a certain point, we joke about this, but I swear someone's just gonna recode FFR to the SNES just to give us more space. Yeah, just, just, just port the game unofficially it's we fine. just need a port of it at this point is what it is <laughs> just port the game it's fine uh, and while they would chat with they, mmc5 woo! <laughs> Ooh, captain's cap and giant's tree that is a great play on possum side and thank you chat for uh, letting me know how he got there looks <laughs> like a he used a libra crest warp and then uh i think probably in combination with exit to get over here uh, nice so this is a little out of logic if i'm reading this correctly from possum but out of logic just got him a go mode item so you know it was a yeah. play to make if it works it works that's the nice Indeed. thing about most of these games is that there's out of logic checks you can make final fantasy was too well programmed there isn't that kind of stuff in it so we can't do that <laughs> <laughs> well, we you see just have to, you'll just have to port it to snes and make it a little yeah, right. more flimsy <laughs> just put some more crap in there that doesn't work right that's right <laughs> make it more jank 
<laughs> we were literally just talking about some of the janky errors we've had in the past and how if we ever do a cheaters tournament, the devs have to put them back in. <laughs> uh, it's a good time. I love the jank in some of these games. I mean, I, that's, you know, we've talked about this before, chat, and I don't know if you know, but um, the Mystic Quest randomizer has a lot of its major bugs removed, but I think we've left in, uh, Wild Ham has left in some of the fun jank. Uh, so you can still duplicate items. Uh, that's not intended. You can uh, <laughs> empty out your bomb inventory and then uh, basically interact with an object in a dungeon and then use it later because you have zero bombs. It, so I don't know if we'll see it tonight, but there's essentially you could skip a whole mini boss fight by uh, interacting with one of the little elevator buckets in the mines. And if you have zero bombs, when you go to throw a bomb, instead you'll just elevator bucket through the walls and just land behind the boss, skipping him. Amazing. Well, it's like the, <laughs> it's like the weird errors they keep into like a link to the past from the Japanese version, where you can like fake flipper and so forth. Some of those things are too useful to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, 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 it's like it's like it's, it's basically the spirit of the game at that point. It's like yeah. taking out those bugs is basically taking out the fun of the game, and, and yeah. it's, it's it's hard for devs to kind of be like, this is unfun versus this is fun. Yeah, exactly. The the the, the stuff that isn't so game breaking that it ruins the experience. The one of the ones that we were discussing was uh, when EXP chests were uh, oh. first introduced. We didn't detect the fact that. Uh, when you're in poison status and then pick up an EXP chest, it'll, like, not uh, uh, not understand and underflow the EXP you get, and suddenly you gain, like, 20 levels. Like, that was amusing to get a bit game-breaking, though, at the same time. <laughs> Just a bit, but that sounds, bit. Th that sounds like a wild kind of flag to enable. <laughs> yeah. Fun stuff. Anyway, we should probably focus back on the game. Uh, we now have Ike here going through Earth Cave while Scar is just finishing up Volcano. We'd seen most of this before, but the important thing to note is that Scar has, I believe, 11 shards in his inventory. Not quite halfway there, but quickly climbing up. And meanwhile, Ike here is just starting this dive, it looks like, for Earth Cave. So he's going to be here just a little while. But considering the fact that he had the rod and it was nearby, it's understandable, especially since he doesn't have... Well, he doesn't have the airship, but he could still northern dock over. It might be something to ask him later why he decided to go here as opposed to somewhere else, and it could just be that there's a hinted item that we don't know about that's in here. Indeed, and speaking mm. of item, uh, speaking of, you know, questionable routing here, I just saw Flip Heel fade blowing up Spencer's cave, I think. He's already turned into Thunder Rock. He's got Mega Grenades. He could have just walked up and blown up Spencer's cave and freed Mac's ship, but he didn't for some reason. I'm, I'm curious as to why, uh, since he was in the Windier region, he didn't just go ahead and get that done, uh, especially since Spencer's cave does open up um, a couple chests that he could check while he's in there, but we'll, we'll see. So just see looking at it now, the loot that Ike here has... Uh, was just hinted for by uh, Scar, and it's at Foresta Outside Box in Fireburg region. So that's something that uh, Scar wanted to know to get his go mode, because that's basically the only thing, aside from some shards, that he needs uh, to try and finish up the game. So, yeah, that was an important hint for him to find, and that's exactly where they had it. Mobius Crest there in Astos' castle. Yep. And, and Elixir, too. So if Kaylee's mom is needed for tonight, they'll still need Tree Wither, but uh, there it is. There is the loot being sent over. I uh, just needed an axe. So That's not, I think Scar's not, in go mode, right? Well, besides from shards. He, he's, he's, a, he's in I have what I need mode, but not what I have to have to, like... I'm not sure how you put that, because it's not like he's go because he needs his shards, but he has key item go mode, I guess, is the best way to put it. Fair enough. Yeah, I've, I've called it go mode too early before. And people are like, they're in go mode because they, they don't have this or that. I'm like, OK, OK, I get what you're saying. I do get it. Yep, I think Possum on his end, he's getting closer to go mode in terms of items. And he's he's basically set on partner levels and his own levels. Level 19 is a very nice threshold uh, to get to Dark King with. And, you know, spell wise, Phoebe can be your heavy lifter. You can look for some more offensive spells if you want. Uh, but at this point, uh, did Possum pick up Thunder? No, okay. I was like, did he pick it up at some point? And I just missed it. No Thunder Rock yet on Possum's side. I wouldn't be surprised to see if he hinted for that next, because the only thing he really needs at this point is Thunder Rock. He's got access to the 
the dock to get the max ship. So he just needs Thunder Rock, blow up Spencer's cave, and he's outside of shards, also in go mode. Uh, so Scar right now. Oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. I was gonna say Flip Hill just needs the hat and the Mobius Crest, and he's also basically set as well. Nice. Uh, so Double Katana apparently is lurking over here in Canaria. We're about to actually see at the AP text is just a little ahead of where we are at, but that's going to be 15 shards right there for Scar so far total. Uh, maybe 16. He's checking all the key lock areas because they're basically out of stuff that they can do aside from going to ordeals and going to waterfall. And you don't really want to go to waterfall if you don't have Oxyo because you don't want to double dip the continent. And ordeals is a long dungeon. So he's doing the short stuff that he can do right now to try and get his go mode out of the way uh, before he has to go and choose what dungeon he's going to do next for sadness. Yep, and un uh, unfortunately unable to spot where Oxiel was, um, where Flip Heal or Ike found it. Yeah, it was. So, I know it was, it was early. early uh, I mean, yeah. if I was going to hint for it, uh, it makes sense to, but right now you still got dungeons to do. You've played with me. You know I don't hint until I absolutely have to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it looks like Flip Heal's kind of following that book right now. He just yeah. finally hinted for that captain's cap. We're at like 43 minutes, so... He's, uh, he's itching to get his go mode progression mm -hmm. uh, and get moving on. Uh, the only other thing he'll need at this point is Mobius Crest, which we know um, is in FFR. We do know it is there. Yep, it was just into Mobius Crest. Uh, so it's in just... uh, Astos' castle, I believe, because that's where we saw it for the other side. Yep. Oh, this castle, yep. So they'll get that soon. As soon as they have that key, uh, that's what's preventing them from having it is the key. Yep, and Oxiel was in ice, uh, ice cave. So it looks like uh, Scar is like, I want to get to ice cave at this point, or not ice cave. I want to the sea shrine. Mm. Now, and he hinted for Oxiel. So that is where Oxiel is. Explains that too, because Ikeers had that for a while, and he got that early. I was thinking it came from M uh, MQR because we didn't see it, but that makes a lot of sense right there. Yeah, and unfortunately, chat for the broadcasters booth here. Uh, the FFR red text uh, is red text for ants for me right now. I yeah, can't read illegible. that. It's, it's, it's illegible. Yeah, it's illegible. Uh, so we have to go off what the AP thing says, and there's only so much we can read quickly. Uh, Oxiel's going to be down here. Already, Also already got Cube into their inventory for the FFMQ side. Uh, waiting to see what the chime is. They hinted it, but we didn't get to see what the hint actually says. So that probably means that uh, we're not seeing the FF players. One. But this also, I think this uh, takes them up to, like, 18, 19 shards right now. So, they are quickly creeping up on the point where they don't really need to care about Chime Cube and Oxiel. Because that's the thing. They've got key, they've got loot. They can finish as soon as they can get into Temple of Fiends. Indeed. Now, I will be interested to see if, if the FFR runners are in go mode first if they stick it out for the mq runners or if they go ahead and rush chaos and then reset after um they beat chaos to help ff mq get the rest of the items they need tonight it's a question i tend to rely on the idea of getting it out of the way quick once once you can go to chaos go do chaos and get it out of the way uh so that way when your partner is done they can just done done and you're out of the race and don't have to worry about it anymore You are spending a little time not helping them by doing that, but in the long run, it is a race, and you want to confirm your ending. Now, I think I think we're going with uh, whoever crosses the finish line second for a team determines their time, so we're not doing, like, a combined score for time. If we were, finishing early would be even more important. Indeed. Um, but, yeah, no, we're doing last over the finish line tonight, mm -hmm. chat, so whoever uh, finishes last on a team will be the deciding time for that team. And double checking our shard counts from the Mystic Quest side of the house. They only need 24 shards, and I think both of our runners on the Mystic Quest side of the house are basically at that point. They're close to it. I think they're around like the 1920 threshold last I look. Yeah, they're just trying to gather their last bits of go mode. Thunder Rock there for the FF uh, MQR player, Meteor Seal. That yeah, Ice Cake was stacked too. Yeah. Uh, Ice Cave looks like it had a lot of goodies over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if Possum is gonna finish. I and mean, we know Sandcoin's here. 
Uh, Sandcoin's going to give Possum access to that um, Aquaria region. So we'll see how important that turns out to be. But that would be the only reason I would think he would finish his dive down here. Otherwise, I think he's got just about everything else he needs. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't paid attention to where Ike here has been heading. He's on the open ocean right now. I can tell from the, uh, the pirate slash, uh, you know, other encounters he's been getting. Where is he heading? Looks like a uh, sea shrine area. I'm guessing that means that there's an item in here that he needs to get because Sky Palace is more chest dense. Uh, if you're just going for a dungeon that has treasure, you'd go Sky Palace. But considering he went here first, that indicates to me that there's something that Flippiel knows he needs that's lurking in here. Yeah, we got a question from the chat here asking if the runners are talking to each other. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have three teams running tonight. We have two on, on two on screen and we have another team off camera also running right now but um they each are have their own lovely little voice channel that they have in our discord here and they are talking to each other uh in real time uh trying to coordinate as they go or you know just memeing it, it, that's sometimes just what you do while you run sometimes you mean <laughs> or swear I mean, they, uh, there could be I, a lot of swearing happening i care at one point bought lamp Lamp doesn't do anything, really, so, you know, mean. I love Lamp. <laughs> it removes the dark status, and most of the time, dark status doesn't do anything. Oh, man. <laughs> it's So what it does is it lowers your accuracy by the most tiniest fraction that it's negligible. Now, we do have a flag you can turn on that actually amplifies the dark status, but no one likes playing with that because no one likes having to worry about the dark status. Oh. oh man, you just need to make a flag set called "I Love Lamp." Get that setting turned on. We had a uh, the the dark uh, status uh, amplification in for a uh, winter tournament this last year, and everyone hated it. Oh, <laughs> universally disliked. It was. Feature, I see. It was like, wait, wait! I can't hit them now that I've been dark. It's like, yeah, that's how it works in every other Final Fantasy. That's the status. Come on, man. Yeah. A flip, a finally making his way back to Spencer's Cave. I'll be interested to see if there's anything good in here uh, that was worth getting or slash fading, even if it's sh shards. Um, money. Oh, and he sent the shard over too. FFMQR hinting for Flare Seal. Oh, just wants that damage. Oh, hey, look, we have our canal. That's so useful. <laughs> Thanks, game. <laughs> Getting shards, getting the Excalibur. If there was a crown found. We got the fancy toothpick. Yeah. I mean, it's it always feels nice when you crit with the fancy toothpick, but otherwise it's a uh, <laughs> sword's a sword. It gives you a slight speed bonus, which is always nice <laughs> if you're like at the threshold of outspeeding an enemy, but you never know until you get into a fight. So most of us just keep the claw equipped because it gives a passive magic ban uh, damage bonus. This ice cave over there, Phoebe could be holding on to something, but they'll need to thaw out the continent before they can go do that. Possum does have wake water, though, so wake water could have some uh, goodies behind it, but dipping over to level forest over here real quick first. Now, I did find out something interesting here. So mm -hmm. you'll notice that Possum dipped into level forest there to get his item checks from uh, Scar. What you can do is because there's the feature that Ham put into the randomizer where you can press select and scroll the overworld. Every time you press select in the overworld, that also kind of like triggers the game to give you items. So you can just sit there and mash the select button in the overworld if you want to get items. And I don't know if our runners know that yet. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have to bring that up in the interview. Uh, give them that little tech before the turn, uh, you know, the event we have coming up. Oh, it's vanilla. Thank God. No, no special code needed. That sounds cheaty, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, for some reason, you press select, and it's like, oh, cool, give give Archipelago item. I'm like, that's nice. Moss and Moon found. Speaking of nice things, you'll think we'll see a white samurai? I mean, I would if it wasn't for the fact that there's a status effect on the, um, the white mage for 
using the the Maza. They have that weakness. The I think it was Maza Curse Mute. I think was what they had. So mm -hmm. if you want them to actually cast anything in battle, then you're not going to be putting a Maza Moon on them. Oh yeah, I missed that. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Now, admittedly, he doesn't have that much white magic on them either, so he may not care that much. Question from the chat here. Would the refresher quest trigger from the map? If it was sent over via AP, I don't know. Yeah. It might. It's a great question, chat. I think it would because uh, I think you can trigger the battlefield chest from the overworld map as well. So, um, should hopefully function the same way. So we do know, need to what. see it's... Sorry. No, we do ahead. need to see at some point what their shards are at. They're each in a dungeon where the boss will give them four shards. And, oh, it looks like um, Ikir may just be four shards from Go, but he still needs his key. So wherever key is, which I think is on the FFMQR side, he'll get that soon. And then he's just basically Go mode once he kills Kraken, because Kraken is worth four shards. Yeah, I was about to say, it's basically just kind of coasting out or sprinting for Kraken while yep. he points Flip Hill yep. to go get key. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, Possum's at 29 shards. He's He's gotten his shard count. So I, I guess at this point, he's just fishing for Flare? Mm. Maybe, or at least some sort of damage spell. White or Flare would do it for him uh, for damage against Dark King. I don't know if he's also fishing for life because that would be a comfort pick mm. and also worth noting that um scar is only one shard away from his boss and go mode he's at five he just needs one there will be a shard somewhere in here for sure so oh i'm okay never mind i know why neither of our runners have made it to max uh ship yet uh so uh, full disclosure chat, I made up these Mystic Quest uh, settings a, like a month ago, and then I had a lot happen. So I've forgotten what I've afflicted our runners with tonight, um, and I just remembered uh, Crest Shuffle's turned on. So, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> our runners need the Gemini Crest for Go Mode, not Mobius Crest. Whoopsie. Eh. Is that the one they, that neither of them have? Yes, uh, so it looks like the little hourglass, and I've seen Flip Heel hint for it. So they know where it's at. They haven't gotten it yet, but they know where it's at. We've got uh, Uber Revenant over here, over at Kraken side. That's the boosted version of Lich in our boss pool. Oh, it was Libra. So, okay, good. <laughs> so yeah, for, for our bonus bosses today, we so far know we have Bubbles, the mermaid. We have the evil elf, uh, Ultra Astos. And now we have Ouch Pain, Ultra Lich here who uh, may, in fact, actually kill this party. Okay, cool. And there oh, it is. Wow. The Libra Crest takes in the max oh. ship. <laughs> Woo! So, Ikir gets through on the skin of his teeth with a single black belt, kills Kraken, is going to take this red mage and put them over top of... No one. I didn't know you could cancel out of that. Ooh. Something I just learned today. Today I learned. I thought once you tried to recruit someone, you were just stuck recruiting them. So that's nice to see you can cancel out of that. Yeah, but it looks like Possum's grinding for some reason, taking these encounters. Maybe hoping that Scar will be picking up Flare or White for them before they head into the final dungeon. They've got Cap. I don't know why they're level farming at this point, unless they just wanted to be at level 22 for the extra um spell slots he's grinding it close to 22 is what they're saying uh and it yeah. could very well be that um there's an item here in sky palace that they're also waiting on there was scar paused for a moment and there was some discussion going on you could tell so yeah. whatever they discussed um yeah now is there yeah, an th exp bonus bonus for a number of sky fragments on your side no there is not there is a flat uh xp multiplier that we okay. have set in the seed at the start okay. and it, it like i said i had a i had a theory that they were grinding for 22. at that point though honestly i would go to turn in max hat and then hope i get the encounters on the way and if i don't uh just take a couple doom castle encounters but that's me personally i could see why you wouldn't route it that way 
Flip Hill finishing out Hydra while Possum turns into Cap, making their way to the Doom Castle here. I'll be interested to see if they're just gonna go in with Meteor. Worth pointing out that we are discussing the fact that they could be in go mode right now for Scarside as soon as they decide they've gotten all the items that they need for go mode here for Flip Heel's side. Uh, however, we are talking about a Black Belt pack. Uh, so there's a very good chance that they're going to have to go do some grinding for a little while because Black Belts with Amaza are still not going to really be that useful in comparison to actually true punch power. He exited out and didn't fight Tiamat. Uh, got scared off by those slimes. That is interesting. Yep, and chat pointing out um, that once you turn in the cap, you do lose the encounters on the ship, which is why, if, uh, you know, if you're in a, a high stress or like a, a high intensity race situation, you kind of bite the bullet there and you, you turn in the hat anyways, just so that way, you know, if you need those last couple encounters, you take them in, in Doom Castle. There's usually like one or two encounters on the floor that are equivalent XP. Um, but that's kind of the, the risk you would take, but um, doesn't look like Possum wanted to take that risk, which I understand. Uh, pretty chunky Rex. That was like 10k I saw pop up on that XP. Mm. I mean, that HP. That was a uh, pretty fat. Making his way through the refights here. Meanwhile, Flip Heel and Ike here. I don't know what Flip Heel is missing behind, besides maybe shards. There's the Mobius Crest. Still needs Gemini, doesn't he? Still needs the Gemini? No, Libra is what was needed. Uh, I misspoke oh, okay. earlier, unfortunately. Okay. There's multi-key, which wasn't really needed. There's some Gaia armor. That's going to be very nice for Flipiel going into the final encounter if uh, Dark King rolls any sleep attacks. Um, sleep does no damage typically, but it just makes you lose a turn, which can be just awful. There's our Gemini Crest over there in Wintry Cave. Wintry Cave having a lot of goodies here, and the Excal was sent over to Ike here. I don't know if he's going to be able to make any use of that with double Black Belt setup. Unless Red Mage can wield Excal, and I just don't know. Uh, not unless they have Legendary Swords, which they don't in this fight set. Mm, or in this yep, seat, so I should say, yeah. That is a big, shiny, sharp piece of cash. It is. Just be, being toted around right now. They could find a knight and decide to take the knight, or a fighter, decide to take the fighter, look for the tail, upgrade them to the tail, but I really don't think that's the case. Yeah, Flip Hill, meanwhile, finally getting their last shard that they need to complete their Sky Shard, uh, Sky Coin, and I saw them hit for life. I'll be interested to see. Didn't pop up on the text box, so it must be an FFR. It's a good guess. Possum cruising through these refights on to Zuh. We'll see if the, uh, the Jerk Bird 2.0 is as nasty as the original but uh double arrow on our runner side of the house is going to make this very very quick uh phoebe with arrow does hilarious amounts of damage chat if you just want to enjoy uh once that hits ah p tower thank you chat thank you ham Flip Hill at level 19, just... I was going to say going to forego the grinding, but it instead doubles back and goes for the grind as well. Uh, gargoyles are, are a pretty good grinding mob, all things considered. I know I mentioned that if you were in a, a high-intensity situation, you'd sprint past them. But, I mean, you get a triple gargoyle set up right here and there. While they are a little chonky, they are pretty easy to kill with the right setup, and uh, you can generally outspeed them. So it's a good amount of XP. Meanwhile, Jerkbird 2.0, living up to the name, has Mega White. I saw that <laughs> cast earlier. That was nasty. We have um, a Temper Stick and a Fast Stick on our uh, mages for this Scar fight. So that plus, I don't know, the, the Maza and the Opal, they might feel like they can get through stuff without necessarily needing to take the uh, Fighter. But Fighter is here if they actually wanted it. 
so they can finish up their go mode. I mean, technically, both players are now in go mode. Key, loot, all the shards they need. If they wanted to go finish Temple of Fiends, they could. It's just a question of whether or not they feel like they have the levels to do it. And it looks like Scars over here on this Master Vampire still working the working that down while Possum getting through their Zuv fight in Phase 2 now. Meanwhile, Flippy is going to go ahead and take the Skull shortcut over on the right-hand side and start their way through the refights as well. Uh, unfortunately, not able to cop across because Doomcastle shortcut is not turned on. Yeah, it, for some reason... Real. <laughs> Nuke and Flare are, are never coded to be fire damage except for in, in Mystic Quest. I don't think I've seen them be elemental in any other Final Fantasy game. So Scar you think Lightning, it would be. Scar Lightning gonna have his shards, and you can see that Ikir is in the Temple of Fiends Revisited, and if you're wondering just how it is that excuse me, that they are so quickly getting through this dungeon, and Arden, the, uh, the path they're taking. That's because we are in mid-Topher and not long-Topher. Long-Topher is how the game comes in the vanilla package. Mid-Topher cuts out the middle floors before the elemental fiends and then adds shortcuts to all the elemental fiend floors. So it's a much faster dungeon while still being slightly longer than short-Topher, which is just basically go to the end of boss floor, maybe fight some bosses. And it looks like Scar has found sandworms on the hard reset here for the desert. Had killed the rest of his party and is now doing a nice grind. Going to get in here and eat all the sandwiches ever. He is a sandwich artist. <laughs> now, how far behind does this put him from Ikear doing this grind? Or you know, are they still basically neck and neck? Ikear didn't do much of a grind. So that's part of the thing about this. He, uh, his black belts are fairly low level. He does have two of them, but they are fairly low level. So he could get through this, but it's dicey. If he gets through it, then Scar is probably 10 minutes behind, which could be a problem. Now, if he doesn't get through it, that's a whole different ball game, especially if one of the bosses is so bad that you really did need to grind for it. We won't really know until we get to that point. And, well, we're about to find out how neck and neck Possum and Flip Hill are now. Uh, Possum approaching the, the great equalizer, uh, not having a good offensive option against Dark King. He's going to go in with Megas and Excal, probably uh, leaving most of the heavy lifting to Phoebe as we go in here. Thankfully, Cupid Locket was picked up by Possum Morpheus, so he has immunity from that confusion, probably the worst status ailment in the game. Uh, Flip Hill does not have uh, Cupid Locket from what I can see on the tracker here. Uh, so that's a leg up that Possum has here as he goes into a quick phase two. Meanwhile, Flip Hill getting through the Wyvern here, going up against the Jerkbird 2.0, which we saw was pretty chonky. Uh, so I would say Flip Hill's a couple minutes behind Possum Morpheus here, uh, so long as everything goes smoothly for Possum. Already moving into phase three. I've been, you know, spoke for like two seconds there, and we're already <laughs> transitioning. Uh, on to Kapu Kapu here, the true menace and mastermind behind the uh, tonight's evil deeds. Now I want to point out that Ikir had a very dicey fight there with the carry replacement Evil Elf 2. Uh, was down due to a really high roll nuke there, uh, nuclear late in her spell list, skill list. Uh, they actually were down on their knees and with maybe like 80 health from death for all the characters. Managed to get through it. Nice, safe, no concern there. But that just shows the danger that they're in with this low-level party and what they're able to do with this. Yeah, meanwhile, I looked over at Scar, and he's at level 32 now. What level do you think he's going to be grinding that black belt up to? 42? Uh, probably 42 at this point with his go mode. I mean, you could chance it on 32 since you've got a full party and you've got a fighter you can keep up front, but there's no harm, quote-unquote, in taking your grind up to uh, uh, 42. That's the ideal. The one thing I will point um, is that He's getting great damage off of this Mazamoon. It's not like it's causing any problems. It's It would, might be slower right now to remove it or not, just depending. But uh, you'd be actually getting even better damage and better hits with your fists uh, than you would at Maza once you've reached, like, level, I think, at max 28. Meanwhile, Possum on the Phase 4 now, not seeing any major obstacles here. This is looking like a pretty free and friendly 
uh, Dark King, all things considered here. Nothing nasty coming out in terms of attacks. Uh, but we'll see. Revenant 2 hey. playing with this food, not doing much damage, not doing anything too concerning right now. Low level spells, not a lot of hits. We're waiting to see when actually something nasty. Oh, there's something nasty. Yep, there's a there nuclear. Is, and that is time for Possum Morpheus clocking in a 107.43. Get your GGs in for Possum. Uh, now just waiting for Scar to cross the finish line before uh, we can decide if they are going to be the victors of tonight's race or not. Ike here could come in clutch here. If Ike here comes in clutch here and makes it all the way uh, through chaos with this party, uh, this will make Flip Heel and Ike here our winners for tonight. Uh, so Herbert really doing gonna... his uh, sexy man pose over here. Yep, uh, get your <laughs> stupid sexy birds in chat. <laughs> Is that what it's called? That's uh, great. That's what I called that. That's great. Just, <laughs> just remember sexy man pose from back in the day from Battlefield Friends or something. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so flip heel now moving on to dark king not too far behind possum like i said um aside from not having confusion immunity i didn't see too many confusion moves come out outside of phase one uh so this should be not so bad especially with phoebe at level 31 this should be relatively free ish so Ike here scooted through once again by the skin of his teeth for that uh, Re Revenant 2 fight at the Kraken spot. We have two bosses to go, but it does also look like he's maybe starting to run a little low on healing here. And he's getting ambushed by these airs, which you also don't want to see when you're running low on healing. Yeah, meanwhile, it looks like Scar has switched over to his fists like you suggested should be done uh, to get mm -hmm. some better rolls out. So we are in full uh, punch go mode in terms of this monk i think he's gonna get like one or two more levels out of this level yeah 41. one more level if he's if he's aiming for 42 he's gonna finish up right here uh and then we're gonna see the the freight train just come rolling through so we got master vampire 2 here uh, with the proper sprite and not the weird bugged one we had up on sky palace uh master vampire 2 here at the uh, tiamat 2 spot so far nothing too concerning a lot of Invis 2 coming out because we had daggers for everyone, so big round of Invis 2s. And now we're going to start doing some actual damage. Yep, and 42 is exactly where Scar is stopping and making their way mm -hmm. to the floater, and I imagine they headed straight for Topher. Yeah. Maybe buy some healing, and that's about it. Because he used a lot of healing for his grind, potentially. Yep, stopping by and doing some shopping here. Yep. Just don't want to take too long that grind was the grind was lengthy and you you definitely want to make sure that you're all set looks like they picked up 22 heal pots yeah that, uh we have a flag in place now that actually caps you from uh have being able to buy more than you can carry so he only needed 22 and Pretty there was nice. bubbles fade apparently from uh the vampire there they are the ones that ended up with it Slowly trying to heal back up now. And meanwhile, Scar is topped off and headed for Topher, so it is neck and neck. Flip Hill mopping the floor <laughs> with this uh, less than impressive Dark King. Uh, there was a lot of. I, I, I honestly feel for the Mystic Quest runners a little bit because it's. They had all that effort and all that, uh, you know, puzzle solving to get to a lackluster final boss here. Uh, yeah. Oof. All that damage done to the Master Vampire eradicated because he has Cure 4. Oof. So Indeed. Yeah, that was that was rough right there, and yeah, you need to you need to get through his damage quick now because you don't want to get that a second time. He's just wasting time for you. Lightning 3 actually does some decent damage against a couple of the characters. But he was wisely already healing. Now I am I I imagine Scar is going to be relying mostly on muscle power to, to oh, power yeah. through the this Topher. Yeah, no, it's spells are. Irrelevant. Yeah, for, for Scar, it's weight, punch, fast, maybe temper, and that's about it. And then you just wait and punch for the rest of your turns on any particular fight. Oh no, some something big came rolling out that was very powerful that I missed. Uh, everyone but the Red Mage is down. Red Mage is at four health off of an Ice Three. Can he nuke his way to victory? 
Well, Crack doesn't stop it. Uh, second nuke. Expert, can this nuke do it? No, what do you have that you can do? An ice... Oh, ouch. He has a triple kill nuke on a high roll that knocked out all three, and that is the concern when you have low-level black belts, is the fact that they don't have a ton of health, and you're risking it when you go in at a low level like that. Another errored um, fight here for the... Uh, there, there must be some color option that Scar has or something, because... He's getting all the weird color combos. Honestly, I love it. I think I think this this Revenant looks cooler than the other one, uh, with the white and the green and the eerie yellow, yep. sick yellow ish. So Fighter did his job. He took the hit, and then Revenant died because punch. I believe What's what on? we're going to see all in a lot of these fights is because punch. And now, yeah, Master Vampire error. So I think it's just something on Scar's side with their ROM or with their emulator settings. So, I, I feel like the fighter here is like, what's my purpose? It's like, you get punched in the face. Oh my I god. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen Rick and Morty, but there's uh, uh, Rick yeah. builds a little robot that does that does butter, and he's like, what's your purpose? To, to butter toast. Pass the butter. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god. No. <laughs> yeah. Tough break, bud. But yeah, that's our, that's our fighter tonight. Our fighter yeah, tonight is Butterbot. Butterbot, he <laughs> passes the butter. <laughs> wow. Okay, and you can see Scar, and, and the time it took for Ike here to do all that, Scar did his entire grind, and now he's all the way up to chaos already. That is the freight train. That was, what, maybe four minutes? Yeah, but I mean, but... You know, props to Ike here for taking the gamble, yeah. though. He, oh, he did a good really gamble. good job. Yeah. Really good job getting up that far with that low-level party. So, wait, punch, temper, fast. And now all that's coming out. Tornado comes out. Scary. Fast comes off. Uh, fighter hits for damage we didn't give it to see. And then almost, that's over 1,600 damage. Uh, we're going to temper again for the lulls, but I'm honestly, Chaos only has maybe one more punch in him, and then it's over. And uh, it's over. <laughs> yeah, for... <laughs> GG's. <laughs> yeah, wow, GG's. That's that's the black belt for you. <laughs> like a dollar store schoolyard bully. <laughs> yeah. Chaos goes down two punches. <laughs> uh, woof. That is... The black belt is crazy. But, I mean... That was what I was saying. Is like if for some reason Ikea runs into any problem, Scar is just gonna roll right over top, and that's basically what happened. Um, and and a, a great showing mm -hmm. uh, for Possum Morpheus and Scar here, uh, really showing the work they've put in and practicing both of their respective games. Um, it looked like some pretty good coordination too, all things considered. I think there was a lot of good communication on their side of the house in terms of hinting slash getting exactly what they needed for each other uh, to make their progression as smooth as possible. Yeah. No, it was, a, it was a good run on their part. I was impressed. So let's see. So in terms of Ikea's finishing out this run, what are his options besides just kind of taking these fights again and hoping for the best? Is there any any alternate kind of strats that he can employ here to get through that vampire fight specifically? Um, have more health. I mean, the problem was the fact that it was a very high roll nuke that took out three of them. Um, it may not happen again, but it may. And when you're getting hit by that high roll regularly, then the only thing you can really do to defend against it is to have more health. Unfortunately. Um, it sounds like we're joined in the chat by runners. Indeed. GG's. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so first finish on stream, and I think first finish overall, I have not seen uh, Potato or 10 hit their done commands yet, so... Uh, GG's on the victory tonight, guys. How do you feel? That was great. That yeah, was it was a lot of fun.
Yeah, we were we were commenting on y'all's coordination there. How did you guys feel uh, the communication coordination went in terms of getting each other where you needed to go effectively? How'd that kind of plan out for you guys? It was great. Um, Possum has taught me like three randomizers now, so it's very easy to listen to him when he tells me to do something. <laughs> When you have your seeing eye runner, uh, all things are possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess we'll start with you, Scar. How did you feel about that seed uh, in terms of, you know, your overworld travel and basically your routing there and, you know, deciding to go with your party comp of fighter, black belt, uh, red mage, white mage there at the end instead of uh, picking up that other black belt? Um... Uh, so the that that the walk cycle was fantastic. Um, <laughs> it was like four or five steps, maybe six steps off the hard reset, and then a nice long jaunt afterwards, which is perfect for this, where you're like diving halfway into a dungeon and resetting out because you don't need to keep the loot. I got exit early, so I was exiting half time to keep my XP, but it was still fantastic. Um, and I don't know, a uh, fighter's better at swinging a masa than a black belt. And I only need to get one of them to 42. So, fighter stayed. Second black belt yeah, left. Yeah, we were making a joke that uh, your your fighter eventually turned into the butter bot from Rick and Morty. He was like, what's my purpose? You get punched in the face. That's it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, nice Possum, big how'd you feel about? Yeah, exactly. Possum, how'd you feel about your seed? I saw a lot of world travel and a lot of uh, double dipping there. Obviously, necessary double dipping, but how'd you feel overall in terms of the progression? The I mean, side. I was over the moon when the early Hydra gave the key. I was like, man, <laughs> we, we hit the the jackpot on this. Like, his, I will route in early levels uh, much more aggressively than pretty much anyone else I see play Mystic Quest, which can get me in trouble and got me in trouble in the last tournament. But in this particular seed, knowing that Ruben's breakpoint for white was level 22, I only needed to get to level 10, level 12 on the main character. I was like, if I do this, I can go all the way through Lava Dome, pick up the 30 chests, and then just, you know, beat the Hydra as well, open up the spot in Fireberg and do all that. And, you know, just happened to work out beautifully. And then it was like, oh, wait, we have a crest now, where does this go? And it led me to a live forest, and it's like, wait, that's another, like, 25 chests, uh, plus the tree, if we can get the right goods to do it. And then Bone Dungeon was over there, and Pazuzu's Tower was over there, and it was just like, okay, that's like three of the hot spots in the seed that are done already. The only big one remaining is Ice Pyramid, uh, wherever that is, and I didn't really care at that point. Uh, and then we just started hinting real aggressively as well for different items, uh, and also learned that the Gemini crest, which could potentially lead to the dock, was behind a different crest. So it was like, okay, well, we don't even need to bother with that anymore. And yeah. just it, it really lined up well on the Mystic Quest side to just kind of zoom through it. And with Scar going Black Belt and, you know, us committing to that as a team early and being like, yeah, just do the Black Belt thing. You have a great cycle for it. Uh, I don't need to, to have him hint for things and me go fetch them as well. So it kind of lets me just run on my side and for him to kind of do the same. And so even though we're working as a team, there's a lot of independent thought that goes into it. So it was just a really fun one overall. Uh, and, you know, always real fun to play with a, a good friend too. Awesome. Yeah, no, no I'm glad you're liking the settings. I, 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 I was telling Chad, it's like I made these like a month ago and then I had a <laughs> lot of life events happen. So thank you. Congratulations for on those life yeah, events. Thanks. <laughs> thank you uh, uh thank you for workshopping these uh this hodgepodge of settings that i've thrown together for you all and I, i'm glad it turned out i i specifically push for shuffle spellbook uh, spellbook shuffle just because i don't think we've seen an event yet how have you guys been finding that um with these settings how has that been you know breathing new life into each one of these runs y'all do i mean I had Ruben for the majority of the seed. Like, yeah, that, that, that kind of that says it all. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, uh, you guys were spoiled for choice. You had two white sealed partners this seed. Yeah, but we had really no nice. flare. We had no meteor. And then Kaylee literally rolled no spells. 
Uh, it, like, sorry. <laughs> it, it was one of those situations where it's like, okay, well, Kaylee is is dead to me, and Tristam learns fire and blizzard and heal and cure, so he's dead to me. So it's either yeah. Phoebe or Ruben, and it's like, well, I'll just run whoever I get early, and then try to land on Phoebe in the end. And that's what ended up happening. It was like, okay, I, I you know ran with Ruben for what, fifty five minutes, and then just kind of threw him to the side because Phoebe is Bay. Um, yeah, well, early game Ruben's <laughs> really strong. And speaking of he strong, is. that was a really good finish there from Ikear after taking that wipe in Master Vampire. So that's time for Ikear, uh clock in in a one twenty two thirty. Get your GGs in chat, and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get Ikear and Flip Hill to join us here in the broadcast booth. We'll kind of pick everybody's brains. Yeah, GG's to them as well. That's awesome. Really good showing. Yeah, Ikear actually, uh, GG's gentlemen. GG's. Yo, I was, I was literally just just about to say Ikear. You actually made it to Topher first. You made it to Topher while Scar was grinding up their powerhouse of a black belt uh, to forty two, but unfortunately took that wipe against Master Vampire. That cure uh, four. Oh, I was yeah. so close to that. Yeah, I, I, I felt Dark Moon like cry for you a little <laughs> bit when that happened, and then you took a nuke that wiped out your party. Um, feels bad, but otherwise, I think if you hadn't taken that wipe, you might have taken it home for tonight. Um, but yeah, I'll ask you all the same questions, and we'll start with you, Flipiel. How did you guys feel about your seeds tonight? Um, the story of this seed was um, basically, I don't know what happened, but I guess I didn't I forgot I the sword was a starting item or something because I didn't have it marked <laughs> or auto track. So yeah, when I went to the ice, saw the ice pyramid, I just left because like, oh, I don't have a sword yet. Okay, I'll do this later. Which turned out to be extra bad because I think the helmet was in there with the fire resist. Yeah. So when I went and back, your sand uh, coin. when I went back to dual head Hydra and he like crit Phoebe and then I wiped. So I was like, oh, cool. I guess this is dead forever. And then, like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes later, Iker was like, oh, hey, I need this uh, dull head Hydra chest. I'm like, uh, the key was there. <laughs> Required. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was so mad. I, I, I threw, like, five bombs at the guy. But, yeah, other than that, this was uh, this was pretty fun. Like, yeah. I enjoyed I, it. Iker, how, how about you? How do you feel about the FFR seed? Uh, too many black belts. <laughs> <laughs> I started with black belt. It is a little bit rough, and we only get those three uh, nuke items. But a, um, I... I, I it felt weird going around the right size. I figure, okay, well, I got, um, what I get, what I get from level, whatever I smell like. I got both uh, exit and warps. So I'm like, okay, that's easy to do ice with. Oh, those were two. Those are at two. Oh, yeah, right, because I went down to uh, all the way to Elfland eventually and found those. I'm like, oh, well, I'll just go back because I want the character on a volcano. I had two character parties, especially one with the black belt. Uh, me not having realized until I was going down there already that, hey, all the weapons have magic stuff on them. Um, I missed that part of the, the, the flag set because I was just reviewing it right before the race. <laughs> so, yeah, that felt bad not knowing that, but then yeah, they, they had decent stuff, although a lot of the three lit two items in Corneri were hilarious. Um, never found the life. Yeah, I didn't find the floater either. Floater was... Yeah, I just hinted that to find out where it was at. But, uh, yeah, shards were coming in pretty quickly, and I didn't feel the XP was good enough for a grind because it felt slow. Even though it's like level 23, 24. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, the C1, um, it flowed smoothly, and I got uh, Flippy was uh, white out of, uh, uh, out of the uh, ordeals. Fair the, the, enough. Well, um, town Shuffle is really interesting in this flag set. Yeah, no, I think we saw a lot of interesting Shuffle tech. Uh, I, I'll call it Shuffle tech for a lack of a better term. On both sides, Alice, because we also had uh, Overworld Shuffle plus Crush Shuffle for the Mystic Quest uh, team, so they didn't even know which one they needed for Go Mode until they found the location, uh, which I honestly think is fun, but, you know, my definition of fun could be a little sadistic to other people. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, speaking of those fun, uh, not fun settings, I did want to kind of pick everybody's brains. And we'll start with Possum and Scar. Uh, you know, Possum, uh, you've been running uh, these settings a lot for testing here. And I know you proposed some changes, but and based on tonight's run, uh, is there anything that you, what did you like the most about the seed settings and what did you like the least? And, you know, if there's anything you would change, what would it be? Uh, well, coming from the Mystic Quest side, uh, I mean, behind the scenes, having done the testing and kind of being the one to 
to just grind him out and realize that like BK is going to happen if we don't push more progression towards the Mystic Quest side. I think the Mystic Quest side is real solid at the moment. Um, I don't really have anything else to add or remove from it. The last like half dozen seeds have felt really good with the River Coin and the 65 instead of 50 on progression, uh, kind of iterating off of the base. For the FF1 side, I think it's pretty close too from an outsider's perspective. I'm nowhere near as good as basically anyone else in this room at, at FFR. Uh, but the <laughs> one thing that I've kind of seen is like to maybe make Fighter and Thief and, and a non-Black Belt party have a better time in Topher with the Alt Fiends might be incentivizing Power Bonk. Other than that, I'm, you know, kind of spitballing with everyone, uh, you know, not really thinking of too much else that would like really shore that up. Uh, you know, Black Belt's going to do what Black Belt do, but trying to balance out the rest of it, I feel like, is is potentially the challenging part. So the best way to do this, if you want to try and make Fighter and Thief more manageable and maybe take away the the always-on option of, let's just take a Black Belt, um, your best bet is probably to, I mean, maybe just remove Black Belt early on from the Forced Party and then have it only be a possibility in Recruits or maybe remove Black Belt entirely from it. That alone means that you then have to actually think about your gear and your options, and grinding is less essential than anything else for that. Uh, but it also takes away the freight train aspect where it's like, well, I've reached 37, 42, I never have to worry again. So it, it keeps the stress there and it keeps the concern and the strategy. But then, of course, you know, you have to decide whether or not you really want to remove the black belt or if you like the fun aspect of them. I yeah, I... I I, I, I'll, I'll throw it over to you, Scar. I mean, because you ran FFR tonight. What, how do you feel about all that? Or was there anything that you this, would keep or change? I think I think this flag set needs one tweak, and that is to guarantee an offense item. Whether that's... Because that's an option. It's the guaranteed defense item is set to ruse, so your power rod will always be ruse. The guaranteed offense item is currently set to none, so the power gauntlet can roll any spell. If that were set to Saber or Temper, uh, those Black Belt becomes the calculus of do I have the time to grind versus my opponent, or or do I just buff a fighter to Oblivion? I don't think you need to remove Black Belts. Black Belts are fine. They're a part of the game. Yeah, we, I mean, they're, I get what you're saying. To, uh, fall back on if we've, Topher is we've... particularly rough. We've removed them in flag sets before, and it can be interesting, but I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I would definitely guarantee uh, Power Bonk as a, a good idea in that case, then. Yeah, and I, I guess Ike here, the, the other side of the FFR site, not to skip over you, Flip Heel, but I guess since we're discussing the FFR stuff, right now, Ike here, what's your input on that? I mean, anything that you would, do you agree with those changes? Something else you would adjust? Yeah, I don't mind the, the XP and the XP belt. It felt all right at the beginning. Um, I didn't go for the grind because I just didn't see me getting the XP needed. Um, once you have the four party, and you want to nerf to black belts, make deads gain XP so you can't just kill everybody off and gain the XP that way. I think they're fine because otherwise I, the black belt I wasn't using for punching most of the time. It was, he was like fasting or tempering the other black belt. Um, I don't know, I, I'm indifferent toward the party composition, but uh, having black belt early was a little challenging. I like that part. Fair enough. And, and you know, Flip how do you feel about the Mystic Quest um, seat tonight? Anything um, you would change or adjust? Well, let's see. Like I said, this is only the first one I've done. Like, ever since the tournament, I've kind of been busy with other stuff. But uh, first first impressions are having, having one extra coin to start is, like, amazing. That's great. Because, you know, two areas to explore rather than, like, five locations. It's, you know, just like you said, prevents the BK possibility so much more, and then it's like one less coin or something for early progression you have to hit at, which, you know, you know, you, depending on how many item checks you get early on can be huge. You don't get bottlenecked or, like, choose the wrong thing. So that's great. And then, you know, with the crest shuffle, I, I like, it's kind of cool. It, it, it gives you, like, you know, you find one, you know, it's, like you said, multiple ways to find go mode. Like, it, you know, 
you don't know exactly where it is so it's like do i like this you know at the end of this seat i was like i knew where both crests are but instead of rushing the one crest i was like i just you know i got them both just to be safe because i didn't know and we were still looking for charge so i just it, yeah it just per gives unique options and decisions to make at the end so that's always cool yeah and, and i think this public shuffle also adds that little variety of not seeing phoebe every time um because as much as i love best girl sometimes it gets a little tired of uh rush phoebe to win game uh <laughs> and so i've been trying to lean away from those when i propose seed settings for future events uh and yeah, yeah no I, I i agree with y'all that starting with a coin i didn't consider that because it's not an existing feature right now but you know, based on the feedback, Cam might have some work cut out for him. Uh, maybe adding that as a permanent feature, like start with a random coin um, as an option for the randomizer moving forward. We'll see how that. Uh, oh yeah, that'd be cool. How that plan plans out. That way, you know, you're not locked to just forest uh, every time you, you roll a seed. So awesome. Well, um, I think that we have just about taking up everybody's time for the night i do want to give everybody an opportunity for uh final thoughts and shout outs though so starting with uh flip heels since you spoke last we'll start with you and move to ike here any final thoughts or shout outs for tonight uh i i guess that's it um thanks for the calm free stream tracking and stuff always fun and then i guess one funny thing is I guess I was glad I brought PB to Wintry Cave because that was that that was a that was a nice final, you know. <laughs> she had the gay armor, so that was that was pretty pretty nice at the end. So, yeah, no, Gaia is always nice to have. Uh, but yeah, no, awesome. Uh, Ike here. Uh, yeah, thanks again for the restream. It was it was great. Loved it. Uh, I'm sure I'll look back and do uh, do amazing commentary and tracking. Um, I just want to shout out that we didn't get a single fetch quest item until the end of the game at Herb. Everything else was a uh, get into a dungeon, clear an item, or a travel item. Yeah, and it always feels nice to have that direct run to next objective instead of like, oh, I'm being strung along here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, and, and it, yeah, shout outs to you guys on that amazing run. Y'all were very close behind uh, our winning team tonight and had an excellent show of skill. Always great to have you guys in the showcases. Uh, Possum, any final thoughts or shout outs for tonight? Uh, just a thank you to Scar, especially behind the scenes. Uh, one of the things about testing these sort of flags, uh, you know, for for a potential upcoming event is that if you're doing it through Archipelago, you need you need a partner to do it, and he's been putting in the time with me. So even though he's not technically part of the event team or anything like that, I need someone behind the scenes to to kind of do it with. So I appreciate Scar putting in all that time and effort with me. Uh, you know, two, three seeds a day sometimes to really get the iterations correct on this and make sure that it's all coming out the way we want it to. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Scar, sir, especially. Uh, but thank you to the uh, the Restream team, Wilden, Artea, uh, Dark Moon, Hebbings. Appreciate y'all. Uh, congrats again, Hebbings, on the life events. It's wonderful to hear all that news. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you. And Scar, uh, the finishes out. Any shout outs or final thoughts? Uh, just thanks, Possum, for, you know, dragging me along and getting me to do some Archipelago stuff. I've been wanting, to, you know, since I heard of the idea, I've been wanting to do more of it on sort of the smaller scale. And, well, it can't get much smaller than uh, 2v2. Awesome. Well, again, shout outs to all of our amazing runners for putting on a great show tonight. And uh, shout outs to Ten and Fried Potato, who were not on stream, but also participated and uh, had very respectable times of their own. Uh, in chat, if you want to get in on these archipelago races, you don't necessarily have to be on screen like you're seeing here. You can join us in the uh, Discord at ffmqrando.net and join our community showcase races. You're more than welcome to join in as extra runners who may or may not be featured on stream. Uh, we always love the extra participants, and it's always a good community event to get a, get a hold of, not just to be uh, spectators in chat, but for to have people participate in real time is always a treat as well. Um, so if you want to get in on that, again, check out ffmqrando.net and check out a link to the Discord and join us on the next one because we do this at the last Wednesday of every month. So our next showcase will be October 30th. So just before Halloween, it might be a little spooky. We'll see how it <laughs> how it rolls out. Um, and again, huge shout outs to my co-hosts, Dark Moon. Always awesome to have your FFR knowledge uh, because Lord knows I have almost <laughs> none myself. Always uh, happy while, to be here. 
appreciate it. And Wild Ham and Artea, uh, awesome to have you guys working in the background as trackers slash broadcast team and Socket as well as our other tracker, keeping us honest uh, in chat. You keeping us honest as well. We wouldn't be putting on the show if we didn't have somebody to watch it. Uh, but I think that is going to do it for us tonight. Thanks, everybody, so much for watching. We'll see you all next month. Take care.